Markdown can be used for something as simple as formatting text on Trello, for example, or as complex as creating an entire table on an Obsidian node using characters, typing characters to build that table. There are two main approaches to writing using Markdown and any variations between them. The first one is what I like to call layers. There are two layers, one where we type the codes to format the text, and then we have to switch to a reading layer where we'll see that text formatted. This is how Obsidian, Trello, and many other apps implemented Markdown. You have these two layers you can edit and you can view the formatted text. On the other hand, we have software like Evernote, Language2, and many others that have a single layer. As soon as we type the, the code to format the text, the text is formatted in line. There is an entire video here on the channel where I explain how to use keyboard shortcuts to format text on Evernote. Many of those keyboard shortcuts are markdown commands. So as soon as you type it, the text will convert to a formatted text. I have here a simple note on the left window and Evernote on the right window. I'll show you my favorite markdown elements, the syntax, the ones I use all the time, and compare them to show you the difference. For example, if I want to type something in bold, I just start with two asterisks. And as you can see, nothing happened. Let's do italic. Again, nothing happened. A bullet list. And a numbered list. And now if I click here, everything is converted. In Evernote, this doesn't happen. As soon as I type, for example, one dot, it creates a list. Another element I like is the creation of links. Start with a bracket, close the bracket, and then add the address. Again, nothing happened, but if I click here, I now have a link. Let's do the same on Evernote. And as soon as I type enter, it converts. I cannot go back here. The only way to change this is using the, the built-in feature to edit URLs. Uh, but on here, I can change it. Let's change it to .com, for example. And that's fixed. The syntax is really intuitive and pretty easy to memorize. If you practice, in no time you memorize the ones you use most of the time. There are some variations that you have to be aware of. Some, some of the apps will allow you to use very basic uh, markdown syntax. Others like Obsidian will go to the extreme. There are so many possibilities there. Check the description below and you find a table with all the markdown syntax. But here's my tip. If you start using an app that is compatible with markdown, go look for their table. Because sometimes there is a slight variation and sometimes you find that one software is compatible with more codes than the other one. And talking about Obsidian, let's take a look here on how it is in between Evernote and Simple Note. Now we have here Simple Note on the left and Obsidian on the right. Here's the bold code again. And as soon as I hit enter, it will convert. The same for italic. If I click here, I can edit it. But if I change this to the reading mode, there is no way to click here and add it anymore. I have to go back to the editing layer. And this is a good opportunity to show you one advantage of apps that use both layers. If I go back to Simple Note and copy this and paste it here, 
I now have all the formatting on the other software. If you know the code, you can type it anywhere and copy and paste it to the edit layer of a software like Obsidian or Simple Note and then click the view to see the text formatted. However, for some people, this multiple layers, this editing mode, viewing mode may be too much, or maybe they just want an easy way to format the text while typing. And in this situation, a solution like the one Evernote and Language2 and many others use that the, the formatting, inline formatting, might be the best option. If this was useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Again, remember, you'll find all the syntax in the description below, many tables there, and I, I think you should practice. It's, it's a good thing to learn. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you soon.